All right, today we're going to be building a Max for Live device that will allow us to set the probability of whether or not a MIDI note will occur or not. So we can write melodies or beats or whatever we want to do and, and be able to probabilistically control events. So to do this, we're going to start by going to our Max for Live devices, starting with a just the default Max MIDI effect, dropping that onto a track. And before we get too far into this, let's just make sure that we've got something that's going to generate sound while we're playing along here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an instrument. I'm going to do the collision instrument. It's one of my favorite instruments in Ableton. I'm going to switch the resonator one to being string type sound. Get a little bit of reverb on that. And now let's go in here and let's just build up a chord. Let's put that one there. Turn that into a whole measure and then get that going. And now rather than just playing that all at once, let's bring in another MIDI effect to arpeggiate that at 16th notes. There we go. So now I've got this arpeggio, but it'd be great if I could have it set so that it's not always playing all these notes, but just sometimes playing each of these notes. So let's build a Max Live device that'll let us do that. Let's crack it open, click on the edit button. Um, if you're brand new to Max for Live, I'd strongly recommend you check out some other videos just to kind of get you acquainted with it. Um, but uh, if you're just a little bit comfortable, then you probably should be fine. So here's our Max for Live device. We've got by default starting out with just a MIDI in, MIDI out. So we're just passing our MIDI straight through. And what we want to do is we want to edit that data as it passes through. So I'm going to break that patch chord. I'm going to create a new object called the MIDI parse object. Because all this data that's pumping in here could have a lot of information in it. It could have pitch bend, modulation, control data, note velocity. It could have all this stuff packed in there. And what I want to be able to do is I want to parse that out into just the note on or off or the note and the velocity. So if I look at the outlets here, we can see this first outlet is a list. It gives me two pieces of information, the pitch and the velocity. So that's the part that we're going to be working with. The rest of this stuff, I don't care about for this patch. I just want to be able to control this data. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and pass that straight back through by reformatting that all back in and passing that out the other side. So I can reconnect all of these outlets to those inlets. Don't have to worry about this last one there. Um, and it's just, just this first one that we're going to be editing. So. Um, what we need to do is this is sending in two pieces or receiving two pieces of information. So if I get this playing and I send the information that we're getting from that to our console using the print object, let's open up the Mac console and tab back over to Ableton and hit play. If we look at that, we can see that I'm getting in this huge stream of information just coming out of that one inlet. So let's go back and hit stop and look at that data that we're actually getting. So we can see that with MIDI, there's two events for every note that we play in the MIDI language. There's the note on event where we get the note number plus a velocity that is greater than zero. And then sometimes later, it's not always the next event as it is in this case, but sometimes later we'll recall that same note number plus the velocity of zero, which is the note off. So we're getting a note on message and the note off message. It's really important that we don't want to probabilistically control the note off events because we don't want notes getting stuck. We always want them to be able to turn off every time they're supposed to turn off, but we want to control um, the probability of whether or not that note will be turned on. So I've got to sort this list of or this stream of information and separate the note on events from the note off events. So to do that, we're going to first unpack this list of data so that I get coming out the left inlet, this will be the note number, the right inlet, this will be the velocity. Then I want to look at that velocity and say, is that velocity value greater than zero? And if so, now this is going to, if, if the velocity is greater than zero, meaning it's an on note, it's going to say this is true, or it's going to pump out a one. If it's a note off event, or it's um, not greater than zero, meaning it's zero, or less, it's going to give me a zero out the bottom or a false message. So then we can use this to control 
where our list is being passed to. So to do that, we're going to create a gate. We're going to say that this gate has two potential outlets from one inlet. Then I'm going to break that flow there, turn this into two ordered passings of that list. So this is our trigger object T. I'm giving it two arguments LL, which means it's going to pass the list that it receives in its inlet first out this side, and then a copy of that same list out this side. So what that's going to allow us to do is say first take a look at that list, see if that velocity is a note on or a note off velocity. If it's a note on, we want to control which of these gates it's opened. So we'll pass in that velocity or that package of note and velocity data down to our gate here, which is where it gets either sent out this side or this side. And then we're going to go ahead and add a one to our true or false statement. So now if it's a note on, the value will be two. If it's a note off, the value will be one. A two turns on this gate, a one turns on this gate. So if I connect that up over there, we've now got one side of this. This is controlling our gate, this side, note on, note off. And this side is just passing our note on information out one side or out the other side. So let's check our work here by using a print object. Print objects can receive a argument that is just what will the name be that shows up here in the list next to the numbers that are presented. So call one of these our note off, connect it up to what we're hoping will be all of our note off messages. And we'll create another one called note on, connect that up to the outlet that should only be sending out our note on messages. And then let's get live running again and see if that's true. So just let it run for a moment. I'm gonna go back and pause it. If we look at our list to see if we've done this right, go back up. I see a note on at a non-zero velocity, a note off at a zero velocity. And then just scroll down a little bit more. It looks like it's always got it correct. So we've done it. This little magic here is sorting out this data and passing it one way or the other way. So since I don't want to manipulate my note off information, I can just simply pass that directly out of our Max for Live device. Now it's going to be the note on information that I want to manipulate. So I'm going to start by unpacking this because it's now just going to be the velocity of my note on information that I want to scale. So we're going to take that velocity and every time we get that velocity, I want to send that velocity down um, one side as well as a bang down the other and connect that up. So now we get every time a note on velocity comes in, we'll get a bang first. And then after it's completed, whatever operations we connect up there, we'll pass along that velocity. So the operation that I want to do is I want to take and generate a random number between zero and 100 every time we get a new velocity for an on, uh, for an on message or a note on event. So random number between zero and 100. And then I want to compare that number to some other number to see if it's less than some other number. And we'll start with a default value of 100. So in this case, we're generating a random number every time we get a note on event. And then we're comparing it to say, is that random number less than 100? Um, or actually, let's go less than or equal to 100. In this case, it will always be less than or equal to 100 because that's the range of values that we can, uh, we can actually generate with this random value here. So then if we create a live.dial, it just allows us to specify a value. We go to its inspector and let's change a couple of things about it. First thing I want to change is its name. Let's call it probability, which changes its name there. And let's change its range to be 0 to 100. Let's enable an initial value and make that 100. So every time we launch a new patch uh, with all this in there, this will default to being to lock my patch here to being 100. And then let's also change its unit style to being a percentage. Cool. So now I've got a dial that allows me to specify values between 0 and 100. And actually, I don't really need decimal points. So let's also change it to be an integer. Make sure that's still where we want it to go. Yeah, because I don't need decimal points, just whole number of values between 0 and 100. And now we'll change that, we'll pass it in the right hand side. So this is now the value that we're comparing our random value against. So if this is at 100, then there's a 100% chance that our random number is going to be underneath that. If I set it to 50, now there's a 50% chance that our random value is either going to be above or below that amount. So then all we need to do is we need to manipulate our 
note on's velocity by the results here. And this is just passing out a true or false, or a one or a zero. So if I just take our velocity value and I multiply it by, in this case we'll default it to one, but if I multiply it by the results over here, it's either gonna be a zero or a one. That random value is not, um, is less than the number set here, then we'll multiply our velocity by one, giving us the results of one. If it is greater than whatever I've got set with the prob knob, uh, it will be a zero, which means that we get no note on message or, or we only have note off messages out of here. So then we can recombine all this data, pack it back together with our probabilistically determined velocity and the note on's message, and then add that in to our output information. Then let's just clean up our patch here. We'll add our probability to the uh, presentation, switch to our presentation view, slide that over there. Let's also make sure that our patch opens in presentation view. Where are you? There you are. We get our, our pretty little line there. And then let's set our devices width by dragging this over, going to view, set device width. If I drag this back over, you can see it's adjusted that line there. And I'm just going to zoom out command one so I can actually see what this is going to look like at a regular level. So something around there, hit save. Let's call this um, DRD note prob um, MIDI effect, save. And then when we close this out, go back over to Ableton. Now we should be able to start with, there we go. Get it playing again. Every single time our notes are coming through. working. So there you have it, a MIDI effect for determining the probabilities of whether or not a note occurs. So I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like or subscribe, or if you've got questions or comments or anything, please feel free to dump that below. I try and be really good about responding to those things. And have a good day. Bye.